how y'all doing? I look kind of different, don't I? What is it? Uh-oh. <clears throat> y'all, I mean, I'm explaining that cough in a minute. It's a girl. Um, it's my glasses. I switched to black glasses. And, um, <laughs> um, I got my nails done. I did it myself. I want these cute, y'all. Let me see if I can be still so y'all can see. Yeah, I shared the picture on Instagram. I'm so damn silly on how I take pictures. You really can't see this. I dreamed of rain. I don't know what that means. You country <laughs> folks tell me what that means. I dreamed of rain. Did it rain last night? I have to look, but I, I dreamed of rain and I w woke up this morning and it looked like it's about to rain. Um, this color is called Canadian Maple. I used to get this at the nail salon. Now, Tina and Tom are open, but I ain't going over there. Hell no, girl, we ain't doing that. So today is Friday, it's Friday, and I'm ready to swing. And I'm on my first week of working the, girl, what do you call the schedule? I don't know what you call the schedule, but basically you work nine days, you work nine days and get one day off. So, heck yes, our symptoms have been lingering for weeks. And like a lot of, this is what I did say in the video, like a lot of upper respiratory illnesses, the cough is the last to go. And sure enough, we are still coughing like, it's, it's July 31st. I tested positive on the 12th. My husband tested positive on either the 8th or 9th. Now check this, this is, this is, I am so frustrated with his damn job. Mind you, you guys, I'm just gonna go right out and say it. I'm not, I'm not gonna say it, I'm not gonna say that. So, my husband was scheduled to return to work on the 20th, right? He, he got, he, he started showing symptoms as early as the 8th, let me back up. He started showing symptoms as early as the 7th, actually. He tested positive on the 10th. So they were like, okay, he, he was doing really well because the, the job kept calling him, child. Every, every day they were calling him. So for about four days into it, his symptoms were very mild. But then what happened, his allergies were out of control. And then the fever came back and he felt horrible. He felt the worst out of all three of us, honestly. And so, until he got his flu shot, which was not flu shot, his allergy shot, which took a good, a good number of days. But catch this, they still wanted him to return to work on the 20th, he refused. Cause he said, no, I'm still coughing and my fever goes up. He said it stays at around 99 at, at, in the daytime and then it peaks around 100 at night. So he fought that. He went to the urgent care on the 20th. We just, <sighs> Phoenix is out of control. There is a serious delay in receiving your results because of the number of cases. And I'm pretty sure it's like this in a lot of other states too. He just got his results from the urgent care yesterday, which is the 30th, <laughs> 10 days later. He still showed positive now and then. No, so I'm glad, I'm so thankful that he said, because again, this is about preventing other people from getting it, you guys. This is about ensuring that we slow down the spread, okay? Like I said, we felt on the mans and, and felt good. <coughs> Excuse me, <laughs> look, I'm coughing. <coughs> like I said, we had very mild symptoms. We could have easily been out. And the hardest thing for me is with JB, because JB has felt okay. JB has not been anywhere now. Hey you guys, we are in our office. I wanted to show you real quick our setup for homeschool. I organized this about two weeks ago now. <laughs> so over here, I'm not gonna go through all of this. Over here is just um, where I'm housing yeah. a lot of the supplies. These are all of the books we will be utilizing. We will be doing a time for learning on 
And yeah, this is a record, Jamie's record player. Um, but I have, sorry behind him, I have the Gold Math series, oh, no. geography stuff, world history, along with um, African Atlas and African American history. It's basically our office slash workout room. So I'll be coming back here with my laptop. I do have a desktop available. I need to get, I need to contact my company to get connections from my laptop. So this is JB's desk. I purchased this desk and chair through Wayfair. Sit down, Dola, so they can see how you look. It's cold. It's cold now. Just got it yesterday. Yeah. This is his work caddy. We have supplies up here along with the stapler. And then it entered these drawers. I got this container through Amazon. Those bottom ones are not that great. Oh, you know what? This one's hard. Kind of hard to open. I see why. This one is really just hard to I see why. Now, try it now, baby. See? So these labels, y'all, I just purchased. I didn't purchase. I just found them online. Um, we have Bible. I, I'm glad this one's just not there. Yeah. Bible, handwriting, history, math, reading. These are just all the different subjects we have. Um, and then we have, yeah, stapler. And again, some of the supplies we'll be using on a daily basis. So what I plan on doing is the week before, whatever he has, this is what he has going on through either throughout the week or the day. My goal is to have everything here for the entire week, okay? So anything that he has to do history related, go in here. Anything that has to do with handwriting, go in here. Um, yeah, we're gonna do it for the entire week. Oh, yeah, that's what we're gonna do. Why do we Oh Lord. So these are the different, um, some of these posters I've already had. I already had these, these three, excuse me, the Africa poster, world, and US map. I purchased these inspirational um, through Amazon.com. I really do like yeah. this one. Be the change in the world. Be the change you wish to see in the world. And of course we have Malcolm X here with a great quote. Education is the passport to the future for tomorrow belongs to those who prepare for it today. Awesome, awesome sauce. So I'm going to show you guys a little bit of Yay. the other curriculum we have. Again, a lot of it is book led. I'm a reader. I love books. So yeah, 9 a.m. every morning. We should be done um, by noon. <laughs> Excuse me, by noon every day. And look, my expectations are it will be a bit of a struggle, power struggle, honestly, for the first two to three weeks. I'm expecting that. So I got to, ooh, child, pray for my patience. So I purchased this teacher's planner through Amazon.com. It basically allows you to list the subjects going across and the days of the week going at the bottom. Um, as far as record keeping, look, no. I will be using just a spiral notebook and writing down everything that he did for the day and everything in a regular spiral notebook, nothing fancy, just writing everything that he did. I will even be tracking his um, behavior, you know. So this is what our calendar looks like for the academic year. I went ahead and um, put in our quote unquote school closers along with any holidays that we are um, acknowledging. Um, sorry y'all, my nose is all of a sudden running. And these are the goals, second grade goals, ELA, second grade goals, math. I got that from um, Teachers Pay Teachers. Y'all excuse the background, I do apologize. I mapped out a curriculum for history of technology slash science. This is stuff that JB requested. He wanted to know a little bit more about old school technology. <coughs> so this will be a part of our social studies curriculum. Um, and I've mapped out a uh, history curriculum for us using, utilizing many of the books that I have in the back here. Oh my God. JB, um, we will be doing a composer of the month or, you know, every two months or so. Look, this is messy. I, <laughs> I included all of the well-known composers into one month. Bach, Be Beethoven, Chopin, okay girl, whatever. And then we're gonna be highlighting some um, black composers i think that's really important for you guys i'm gonna show you it's been a while since i show you cooking right so i'm gonna show y'all what i'm cooking for my husband for lunch today look definitely i need to clean my stove off um i i i'm the type that like to keep my stove clean while i'm cooking hold on y'all um definitely with the outbreak i try to make sure that he has lunch at work look i don't even want him going into the cafeteria like eat within the lab um they have a break room in the lab i don't even leave so uh, zucchini i don't know girl zucchini yeah zucchini that i've chopped up i'm lightly sauteing 
with some, let me turn this off, some spices. We have corn in the back here and couscous. Now couscous is very easy to make, y'all. Climb up here. Climb and you're up gonna there. fall down if you climb up there. You have to excuse the living room. This is his play area. Now JB's is in the class, right? Who are your characters this time, sweetie? So, so it's a family of three, and and there's a and there's a male. Alright. Hey, you guys. We're in the back room. I'm gonna finish this one story for JB. I gotta put my moisturizer on first, JB. Let me show y'all what I'm gonna be using to blow out my hair here in like two more weeks. I wish we had like, like a holy pot here. Like ring pot. Right now I'm hungry. A pizza! Mm -hmm. I'm getting hungry. No, I wanna make, I don't wanna make a pizza. I wanna I make should a be, mirror. <laughs> I'm supposed to be doing my hair. That's a mirror, guys. <sighs> So y'all, I just got this in the mail from oh, Amazon. Dude. This is Cantu Shea Butter Thermal Shield Heat Protectant. Uh, less than five bucks. If you don't put that down, I'm gonna pour a butt whooping on you. Um, Proclaim <laughs> Gloss and Polish. Uh, I get it. And some shears. Pour. I I gotta make some phone calls. Both Angel and my oh. sister called me back. Called me today. Nezzy Naps. Yay! Um, I'm sorry, Angel. Girl. Yay! Do, do. The last few times she called me, I've been really busy. Oh, no! Mm -hmm. Sit down, baby. Let me see. Hmm. I just became a, um influencer. Well, I am an influencer. I became, um, I have a partnership now with Design Essentials. I don't mind telling y'all that. Um, There's a parking, sorry, person walking over there. With someone person. else contacted me and they wanted me to review their products. I can't remember if it was Kriya or if it was, what is the other one, y'all? I can't remember if it was Kriya, Botanicals, or Kinky Tresses yeah. that contacted me. You know what, uh, I've had good relationships with brand owners. Um, and one thing I forgot to say in Snow my flakes. video. Snowflakes. One thing I forgot to mention in that video where I was discussing the situation between Mayel Organics. Excuse me, Mayel. Cause she took out the organics because she changed the formula on some of her products. I could have been petty and brought that up. I could have been petty and brought up the fact that people had issues with their Black Friday. I could have been petty and brought up the fact that people had issues with their May order. And even, you know, I could have went there and brought up the fact that she had made some, <coughs> excuse me, some shady remarks in regards to the main choice, C Courtney. Y'all, y'all who don't know, Courtney started here on YouTube too. So anyway, this is an expensive base. Got it for $4.99 at the Goodwill. <laughs> the Goodwill? I. Oh. Had a, I've had less than favorable comments t in response uh, to, I'm s saying something, in response to Jane Carter products and also Mish. What's Mish? Mish Beauty is a brand. <laughs> they no, both not. were very open to the feedback. It's um, and didn't Sheree basically call Juanita yeah. products her clay washes, one of her Tell clay washes story. trash? I will. She, she, <laughs> Juanita's cool though. Juanita is the owner of Chocolate Kings and Curls. Yeah. Mish Beauty was very open. I was surprised. I wasn't surprised, but I was surprised because I was less than favorable in one of my reviews. Well, and y'all know me, so I don't hold back. And she, I mean, she's a YouTuber also. I forgot her uh, YouTube name, but she came onto my, my, uh, video was very, you know, grateful for reviewing it. Um, was positive, and yeah, that's how you're supposed to be. Okay, so y'all, let's get into the story time. So, let's get into the story time, baby. About uh, Jasmine, who works at the old Wilson Plantation, and had the encounter with Quentin, the mysterious man who just so happened to be albino and the interactions he had with mr joe the old caretaker of the plantation so um let me put the camera more on him y'all so 
Quit all that dang on bouncing. Call you my flip flop. <laughs> so, okay. So I was thinking about the rest of the story. So you ready for it? You ready to hear it? Okay, baby. Things slowly return to normal and she slowly forgets about the altercation between Mr. Joey and Quentin, right? So one morning as she was getting ready for her first, I think she has like a nine o'clock tour, right? It's gonna be a movie. <laughs> one morning as she was getting ready for her nine o'clock tour, she receives a phone call from her grandmother. And she's like, that's odd. Her grandmother knows that her first tour starts now. So why is she calling her now? So she quickly turns it off and put her phone on silence. So that she can go ahead and get to work. So the first tour went well. Everything went great. She had a great crowd. She got some great tips. She's like, oh, with these tips, I'll be able to go out later on tonight with my friend Courtney. So, um, in between her, you know, break, she goes ahead and turn her phone back on. She sees that she now has five missed phone calls from her grandmother. That's very strange, right? Not only did she have five missed phone calls from her grandmother, but she also got one missed phone call from her um, from her cousin, Monica. So she's like, okay, Monica. what's going on? Not the doll, Monica, child. Look, Monica. this is my, my thick old Barbie doll, Monica. Look, Monica. look at that hair, child. Yes, come through, Monica, with the pooch. So she's like, um, on the voicemail, <laughs> On the voice message, her cousin was like, "Mina, can you hurry up and call me right away? It's about your, it's about um, Papa. There's something, something happened to him." So she calls. She's like, "What happened?" You know, she calls her cousin Monica. She's like, "What happened? Can you let me know what happened?" She's like, "Girl, we've been trying to call you all day." She's like, "You know, I'm at work, so I turned my phone off." She's like, "Okay, well, um, Papa had a stroke. He's in the hospital." She clicks before hearing anything else. She goes outside, runs outside. She sees Mr. Joe. <coughs> Mr. Joe sees that she's where she's like, Mr. Joe, um, my grandfather just had a stroke. He's like, oh, okay, baby, I hope everything goes well. She's like, I'm going to take off for the rest of the day, and I'll, I'll give y'all a call and let y'all know. She gets into the hospital room. She sees her grandmother there, and her poor grandfather is hooked up to all these machines, all these tubes, and she's like, you know, what happened, Big Mama? They call her Big Mama. They're like, what happened, Big Mama? She's like, oh, honey, your grandfather was in, he was in the, he was in the garage going, he was in the garage looking for my old pressure cooker. I was wanting to make this, make these pot of, um, of beans in the pressure cooker. And all of a sudden, I heard a crash. And when I went out, he was on the floor. She's like, oh my God, big mama. And so she holds her mama's, her, her grandmother's hand. And then that's when her big mama tells her, she's like, well, baby, can you stop by the house and make sure that everything's turned off? I'm gonna stay with, um, I'm gonna stay with your cousin Monica for the night and for probably the next night. So Mina says, sure. So <coughs> she she already still had a set of keys because she used to live with her grandparents, right? She still, she still has a set of keys. So this is where it gets good. Are you listening? Yeah. So Mina decides to drive back to her grandparents' house, which is only about 10 minutes away. So when she arrives there, you know, she makes sure, you know, she opened up the door. Her grandmother did remember to lock the door. But when she goes in, she sees the kitchen is in a disarray. And she sees there's a, the door leading out to the garage is in the kitchen. It's slightly ajar. So she goes in there. She proceeds to turn yes. off the lights. She goes in to turn off the no, these is these are black people. I know, but that, but that's what white people do. Investigate. She ain't investigating. She turned her stuff off to get the house ready for her grandmother returning a couple more days. So anyway, Mina is in the garage. She sees where her grandfather possibly had fallen. There's a um, box with a bunch of old photos that have spilled out. So she starts organizing the photos, and then she sees one photo that catches her eye. She looks, looks in the photo as a group of old men. It looks very old, like early 1900s. But then one man catches her eye and she looks at him and it's the albino man, Quentin, in the photo. But she's like, everything looks old. I mean, it looks like early 1900s. How is this possible? So she flips the card over, excuse me, she flips the photo over and it has the date 1908. And then the initials underneath the date N O A, and she's like N O A. She's like, how is this possible? The band that she saw, Quentin, couldn't be no more than thirty years old, but yet there's someone on this picture looks that looks just like him from 1908. 
So she she stuffs the rest of she stuffs the rest of the photos in the box, takes the photo, the old photo with her, and quickly turns off the light, shuts everything off, makes sure that you know these special effects have got to stop child. So her grandmother is very distraught. She eventually makes her way back to the house. So one Sunday while they're all together. Mina decides to ask her grandmother about the photo. So she's like, Big Mama, I found this old photo in the garage. Can you tell me about it? Do you do you know what it means? So her grandmother looks at the photo and Mina can see that a very concerned look on her face. She's like, Mina, where did you get this photo from? She's like, I saw it in the garage where, you know, you know, where Papa had fell. So do you know what it is? She's like, no, I don't, I don't know what it is. She's like, you know what, I, I, I don't know what it is. You don't worry about it. It's nothing. I don't know what it is. Mina thought that was kind of odd. She was pretty sure her grandmother was lying, and she doesn't know why her grandmother would lie to her. Cause from what she knows, her grandmother has never lied to her. So why would she lie to her about this old photo? So she didn't think anything of it. <laughs> She didn't think anything of it. She put the photo back in her pocket. They continue on the rest of the evening like everything was normal. Um, and so Mina decides to spend the night over her grandmother's house. And she goes to bed. As she's sleeping, she hears some noises. She's like, what is that noise? She sees noises. She looks out the window and she sees something that looks like fire. She's like, what is going on? Why is there a fire? So she gets out of bed because she's concerned. So Mina opens up the curtains. She pulls back the curtains, which leads, she gets, will you stop? I don't need no sound effects, sound effects. <laughs> she pulls back the curtains to where she can see the backyard and there is her grandmother standing in the backyard, tossing old photos and papers into a fire. So Mina goes out into the garage in the backyard. She's like, Big Mama, what are you doing? She her her grandmother is startled. She turns around. She's like, Oh baby, I thought you were sleeping. She's like, What are you doing? Why are you burning all of Papa Hall's stuff? She's like, This is stuff that he really shouldn't be looking at anyone anymore. This just brings back so many bad memories. She's like, What type of bad memory? She's like, oh, Baby, it's stuff that we don't want to bring up anymore. We just don't want to discuss it. Maybe one day I will, but right now it's not the time. So she's like, why is everyone keeping secrets from me? This is what Mina is thinking. So she lets <laughs> she lets it go. She lets it slide. She allows her grandmother to continue burning all these old photos and documents or whatever. Um, and so as she's heading back into the house, she sees all the boxes that her grandmother is preparing to burn. She decides to steal. Well, I, still it's a hard word. She decides to take a few more pictures that she saw and documents and she runs back into her room. She hides the no, stuff and- She decides to steal. Okay, she decides to steal, okay. So she runs back into her room and she hides the stuff that she took. Child, her grandfather made a miraculous, miraculous uh, this uh, recovery. The doctors can't explain it. He returns home after two weeks of being in the um, hospital and um, uh, a week after being in an induced coma and he's well now. He has a hard time walking, assistance, a, a walker, excuse me. Um, he's a little slow at things and so Mina decides to hire a caregiver um, to help her grandmother and grandfather on the days that she's not available. That's it for now. You good? No. So she again, she decides to use her good tips. Remember, she got all these tips up from the other day at her job, and so now she's gonna go hang out with her friend Courtney at the local at the local bar. And but Mina doesn't drink, okay? But her friend Courtney, oh yes. So anyway, give me the beer, give me the wine. Oh God. So anyway, an hour into it, guess who walks through the door? The mystery man, Quentin, walked through the door. This time, Mina is not gonna hold back. She excuses herself from Courtney. She goes outside because she's pretty sure she left that old photo. She goes through her car looking for it. She doesn't have it. She left it at home. So, she decides to approach Quentin. She's like, hey, um, I don't know if you remember me. He's like, of course I remember you. 
she kind of she kind of thought that it was a little flirtation so he's like what are you drinking let me buy you a drink she's like i don't drink so you can get me an iced tea so he's like okay iced tea it is to give her a, he orders her an iced tea they sit down and so she's like you know what after you had left i noticed that mr joe was very upset you know i know it's none of my business but i've just never seen him that upset before and that's when quentin kind of smirked at her he said like, what he's like you know what um i'm sorry that that happened sorry y'all he basically like, i'm sorry that that happened but i was asking him questions about the old well she's like hmm okay she's and so mina then took it upon herself to ask him questions she, and she's basically was like so are you from around here because i've never seen you before he's like no i'm not but my family's from here and you know he was born up in chicago she's like oh okay she's like so your grandparents were or from here he's like yeah my grandparents are from here so she's like so what do you do he's like i thought i told you before that i work in um <laughs> i work in the history department i'm a professor at the um college outside of town she's like oh yeah that's right i forgot about that she's like you know what um i'm sorry i'm a little bit um I'm a little bit out of the place. My grandfather is recovering from a stroke. He said, like, oh, I'm sorry to hear about that. She said, yeah, it's been, it's been challenging, but we got him some help at home and he's made a full recovery and I think he's going to be fine. She said, but you know what I did find while I was in my grandparents' garage, I found a bunch of, <clears throat> I found a bunch of old photos and in one of them, there was a man that resembled you, Quentin's eyes. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thumbnail. Quentin's eyes kind of deepened when she said that. He said, oh, yeah? She's like, yeah. I mean, the man looked just like you. She's like, if I believe in time travel, I would say that was you. She's, it's, hold on, baby. She said, well, then I flipped over the, um, the photo, and it had the date 1908, and the initials N-O-A. He's like, well, the man in that photo was my great grandfather. If it wasn't about my my great grandfather, was an albino man. She's like, wow, y'all. Little does she know it's actually him? Jamie, no, it's not. <laughs> well, um, she looks over at the bar and see her friend Courtney is really throwing back drinks, shall. So that's when she, you know, tells Quentin, you know what, this has been nice. You know, thank you for answering some of my questions, but I gotta go back to my friend because I came here with my my friend Courtney. So Quentin was like, you know what, that's cool. It was nice talking to you. And I'm really sorry to hear about your grandfather, but it's good to know that he's doing well. He's like, you know what, I would like to get your number and maybe we could do this again sometime. So she kind of looked at him like, she's like, okay, you know what, that's cool. You know, typically she give men a different number, but she decided to give Quentin her real number because she was really curious about that photo and her grandfather's um, garage. And if that was the trauma, the traumatic event that made him have a stroke. So she gave him her number and she walked over to her friend Courtney <laughs> and her friend Courtney turns around. She's like, girl, I didn't know you liked them light bright. She's like, girl, whatever. The girl, this is someone I saw at my tour. It's really not like that. She's like, the way y'all were talking, it seems like you met him more than once. She's like, well, yeah, that's like the third or fourth time I've seen him around, but it's nothing like that. She's like, oh, okay then. So she ends, you know, the night with her friend Courtney. She's like, girl, we have to do this. You know, I don't understand you taking classes, you know, big law student. You know, you working at that slave plantation. But we got to do this again more often. The next morning, she has to work like she normally does. When she gets to work, there are cop cars at the plantation. She is like, what is it now? Cop cars all at the plantation. They get cop their... Yeah, they get there. Mr. Joe is there. Um, there's an ambulance there. Mina thinks to herself, what is going on now? That's it for part two.